All right, good Monday morning, everyone. It is time to talk about the markets with Jim Kramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And Jim, let's begin with Arconic and Action Alerts Plus holding and wow. Elliott agreeing to uh, end their proxy yes, fight. Yes, now this is really important because Elliott got a bunch of seats and I think that they're now in command. If that's the case, then you're gonna see Larry Lawson come in, most likely, as CEO. And Larry Lawson, someone who, caught, uh, who uh, Klaus Kleinfeld said would be doing some short-term things that would boost the stock, not long-term. Uh, well, you know, as shareholders for my charitable trust, we're concerned about overall, we've been in for a while. We are happy if, if uh, they do something that is going to bring the stock higher. That's why we own it. Uh, Lawson worked at Spirit and he did a great job. Uh, Elliot, I guess, had the votes. I mean, I think that's what was happening. We were urging people to vote with Elliot against management. We think that they have uh, demonstrated a, a fealty to, uh, the, uh, and to a strategy that uh, was without Klaus, the management did not have. Okay, the other big news of the morning, Ford CEO Mark Fields has been replaced. Yeah, now this is, he's barely been there three years. Uh, Mark Fields tasked with autonomous car and pouring, pouring profits in there. Uh, never promotional, uh, really linked to the U.S. largely. Uh, domestic has peaked. Did he take actions overseas the way that Mary Barra had? Well, the, you know, they're... You could argue no, Mary Barr was much more aggressive in getting out of bad markets. Uh, Ford was late to China, but that was not his fault. Uh, he inherited a kind of so-so business in Latin America. He chose not to pull out. Uh, Mark Fields did, every, you know, he had a very good dividend. Uh, and I feel like that he got the shift. I mean, I think he was doing a, as good a job as possible. Autonomous vehicles cost a fortune. Uh, it's not like GM has outperformed, uh, uh, Fiat has too. Um, but I think that what happened is is that Mark did not talk the stock up. I, I've had many, many talks with Mark, and I visited their autonomous uh, uh, plant out in uh, Silicon Valley, and I've had many talks with him, and he just said, look, you know, we're linked to U.S. auto, and U.S. auto is not going to be good, and there's not much we can do to break out of that cycle. And I think that just wasn't good enough for Ford. I think it's interesting they picked a guy from Steelcase. Steelcase, obviously, you know, uh, they did move a lot of manufacturing to Mexico from the U.S. That's something Mark feels kind of committed to staying in the U.S. with the president. Now maybe with a new CEO, they can move. <laughs> and they, maybe that's what's going to happen. I would say this. Uh, this was a firing because the stock wasn't up. And there are a lot of CEOs whose stocks aren't up. Uh, is this the shot across the bow first one? I don't know. But it's really a family company. And the family, I guess, turned on Mark. And he just didn't get enough time, I think, to really work some magic here. All right, we'll be watching that one. And of course, RBC is out with a note saying Apple's market cap could cross $1 trillion. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's not that far from here. And I think that what matters, people should recognize, this is a consumer product story. And what's happened here is, is that as people identify with the Warren Buffett thesis that this is a razor, razor blade company, the uh, razor, uh, razor is the hard phone, the razor blade is the revenue stream that comes from service, which frankly wasn't even counted on initially as something that, that Apple had that I think could ultimately be very important as something that I have urged them to spend more time talking about. Uh, I think that Apple is still undervalued. I think if it got to 180, 200, we'd have to see what the earnings are because uh, then I would not feel that it's as undervalued. That's the first time I've said that. I just don't want the stock to get so far ahead. But it is uh, valued at much less than Colgate, than Procter, than uh, Clorox. And if you're going to value it versus consumer products, then it does seem cheap. And Action Alert's club members are following your bulletins on Apple. Yes, absolutely. And they'll be all over it for that, and we'll be all over it. Uh, for Arconic. Okay, and uh, JP Morgan upgrading Qualcomm. What did you make of that? Well, you know, this is something last week, Tim Collins, who's our own, said that this is a breakout stock. And uh, I feel that the JP Morgan uh, piece is a, lot, is a lot of the, about how they're gonna branch away from cell phones and, and NXPI is the way to do that. There is some very, NXPI is owned by Action Alerts. There's some very strange action in the options market every day. Now, there'll be options people will criticize this view, but I think that they should start understanding. There's a lot of buying of the 110 calls, okay? Now, this deal closes at 110. So you have to start thinking that maybe someone's going to stir up trouble uh, because in order for that deal to go above 110, uh, you have to believe that there's another suitor, which I don't think is possible. But uh, Qualcomm, when they close that deal, and I just say if or when, it is going to be a very transformed company. So let's stay up to that. But NXPI, we don't want to sell anymore for Action Alert because we think something could happen here. There's too much option activity in the 110s for me to think that it's done. 
All right, moving on, Credit Suisse raising the price target of John Deere. Yeah, now Deere had a very, very strong quarter, and the, uh, they did crush the numbers, and the cycle is strong. Uh, Latin America's better, uh, United States better, uh, Europe better, construction forestry better, one of the reasons why Caterpillar went up off that. Uh, the ag cycle is back, it's big, I like it. All right, and then on Mad Dash on Squawk in the Street, you talked about Radius Health. Yeah, well, you know, Bob Ward's put together a pretty good company, but there had been a feeling that this, its osteoporosis drug is not that important. Um, I feel like that because it uh, literally has one, and is it that fit, is it vastly superior? Uh, I, you know, it's not clear. But I know that one of the fears was that that there would be a competitive product from from uh, Amgen, and so therefore the market would be very crowded. This basically takes the Amgen product off the market. Uh, you know, it's not that big for Amgen. It's obviously really big for Radius. Is Radius now a takeover target? Yes, and that's why the stock's going higher. All right, and we'll end, as we always do, with earnings to watch. Toll Brothers. Yeah, you know, Toll Brothers last quarter was very, very good. It's interesting. My wife and I looked at uh, a thing called Pure House, which is a very, very large project in Brooklyn that they've done along the waterfront. It's very, very strong. And in the time since we looked, they've gone up tremendously in value. And I think that people are not understanding that Toll Brothers, uh, their urban initiatives are really very, very strong. Um, Toll Brothers beneficiary, remember, rates are very, very low, um, but they're really a play on uh, employment, and employment growth is strong. I know a lot of people feel that, they, that the uh, underclass is not making more money from employment, and that's certainly true, but the uh, people who are doing well buy Toll Brothers homes, and Toll Brothers is a very, very strong. I, I think it can go higher. We talked about the auto sector earlier, but what are you expecting from auto zones? Okay, earning? you know, we're watching Snap One go down every day. It's very annoying um, because Snap One, I think, had a very good quarter, and there's a uh, there's a negative story about Snap One and its franchises that I think is really unfounded. Um, but uh, I've watched that go down, and if AutoZone reported a good quarter, even though they're really not that similar, because Snap One is a business that is selling tools to garage uh, mechanics, uh, I, then I think that the whole group can rally. Uh, AutoZone has a big buyback. Uh, this group has been very underperforming, whether it be Advanced Auto Parts, whether it be, whether it be O'Reilly, uh, whether it be uh, AutoZone. And if AutoZone does a good thing, you probably want to buy some Snap One, which is an actionalertsplus.com. Name. It is. All right, Jim Kramer. Hold on one second. Before you wrap, I want to guys know that Bernard thinks that you both have really nice ties today. <laughs> the huh? purple and tie. You got both kinds of good oh. ties today, and then uh, Tommy thinks, Jim, you've got a great ensemble going. Huh? <laughs> he thinks you have a great I'm ensemble. Like your oh, you're, you're, okay. You're Who said that? <laughs> Tommy on Facebook likes your oh, ensemble. Oh, okay, I'm sure. Bernard let's let's go. Ties. Okay, fine. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy on Facebook. <laughs> All right, and from there, <laughs> everyone, please head back to thestreet.com for more information well, on the stock. Well, let me just say, this is a tie. Oh. <laughs> you know, I should get the brands here. Yeah, let's do it. This is a tie that is from a new outfit for me. Um, Penrose. Penrose, and the Very shirt nice. is a Rothman, and... This is a Brioni, uh, but what's really interesting is this is a brand new tie that CNBC gave me. I've never worn it before. Wow. I looked at it this morning. I said, I don't know. Does that work? <laughs> I dress in the dark, and I guess it worked. Thank you, Tommy. By the way, I just want to point out also, um, you know, Eddie Lampert had some critical things to say about the media and Sears. And so this morning what I did was I went on Twitter and said, listen, tell us your positive Sears stories. Just, I don't want to be the part of the media that's ganging up on Sears, but if you look at the Sears and Kmart uh, mentions, and you can still go there today, I'll have something later by the day on Home Depot and Lowe's mm. that you want to see, I, I don't get a warm and fuzzy feeling about Sears, so I, I, I'm reluctant to blame the media. This is, I literally came in on my, on my Twitter and said, please tell us positive stories, and I'm getting a lot of negative stories, so mm. let's be aware that perhaps it's not the media that is playing such a big role here in the uh, denouement of Sears. Okay, we'll keep watching that yes. as well. Thank All right, Jim Kramer, thank you so much. And for more of the stocks you mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.